Okay, today I'm going to talk about a gas mask where I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with it. It's a very weird thing. Now, most gas masks I either really like, or I despise, such as cheek filter masks, or I sort of think it's got some good features, but it's got some bad features that hold it back. Then I have gas masks where I can't really decide what I think about them, and this is one of those masks. Now, I've spoken about it before on this channel. It is the ANP M51 which ANP is French and it stands for something like something protection so I think it just meant general protective mask and it's this thing and this is a mask where every time I look at it I spot good features and I spot stupid features and or at least stupid parts to it and I can't think is this good or is this bad now I don't currently have a filter in the bag so I'll just demonstrate this without the filter. Now I have tested this and this one does still work but a lot of these don't so be careful if you're buying surplus ones of these lots of them are not in grade one condition, lots of them have like broken lenses or the bit under there which I'll get to where I'll complain about it but as you can see this one says M512 which I think is the size and this one is from 1956 now interestingly there's also one called the M53 which is this mask but with a better outsert bit there. I don't know if they fixed the valve issue I'm going to mention, but apparently it's got like a very primitive speech diaphragm under the grate. So, you know, we'll see if I ever get my hands on one of them, what that's like. But anyway, this is a mask I've said before. I like the bag more than the mask, which is never a good sign. But that is generally because this ba um, bag is kind of really rigid and tough, whereas the mask itself isn't. So um, I'm just checking in case, because there's kind of two hidden compartments in here. But all that was in there is the filter caps and filter plug, but saying that they might be handy to keep. Now the good thing is when I got this, it didn't come with its old sort of 1950s asbestos filter. This one came with a still functioning Belgian 40mm NATO filter, which is very good. Um, that filter still seems to work slightly, so I sometimes use it when I'm doing gas mask tests. But regardless, this is the ANP M51, and it's a very primitive simple mask. I kind of like it's very primitive and simple. The issue being with it that um, it kind of was used for far too long in military service and it has some really glaring faults with it. So, firstly, the weird thing with it is the strap system. Now, as I was saying, I like that it's primitive, but it has, I think, both French and Italian masks had this. Now, I believe this is actually a Belgian one I've got here because Belgian bought them on export from France and um, Belgian kept them until the 1990s when they replaced it with the BEM 4GP until they got rid of those very quickly afterwards and they bought Avon masks and France had it in service around the same time period because you can find uh, pictures of French soldiers who were unlucky enough to be issued with this during the first Gulf War some of them with 1950s filters on the mask so you have these poor soldiers wearing all these heavy um, you know NBC suits and the suits would have protected them, but the masks wouldn't have because they put old filters on them and whether or not this mask was still very good by 1990 uh, remains to be seen. So let's talk about the features of it. So if I just put these weird straps back, which we'll get onto in a bit more detail in a moment, I'm going to just try and fold the mask around so you can see the inside clearly. Okay, so this is your mask, that's all there is to it. There's two Tissot syst uh, tube system under each eye, which is good, because it means it defogs the mask, because there's no oral nasal cut, but that's at least a good sign. And you've got these plastic lenses, I think. So these are an example of very early, decent plastic lenses. They feel a bit more tough than celluloid, but obviously they're see-through plastic. They certainly don't feel like glass, and I think they're slightly scratched, these, like they are plastic. Uh, so, you know, that's a good feature. I've just noticed that actually you can kind of pull the rubber away on the inside from the eyepiece which isn't great but mine at least don't seem to leak around there so it looks like they've kind of riveted on these um, sort of straps to the mask there but that's airtight at least and you have your exhale valve obviously down the bottom there under that grate now the grate serves two purposes. One, it kind of, I guess, protects the exhale valve slightly, but it also kind of reverberates a bit when you talk, which is like a very primitive speech diaphragm. I think I've said this a few times, but lots of masks prior to having speech diaphragms, at least, you know, like the proper plastic or metal discs, kind of put um, metal grating around various parts of the exhale valve assembly because they knew that they'd vibrate when you talk, which would make it a bit louder than not having one. Now, 
These are getting a bit harder to find, but at one point these were probably the cheapest surplus masks on the market, at least where I was cheaper than GP5s. Like a GP5 of the bag and all the kit would normally be, you know, 10 to 15 pounds. Sometimes these were under 10 pounds for the entire kit. Anyway, let me get this cover off, and then we're going to talk about one of the big, big problems of the mask. Right, time to take this off. So this just simply unscrews, it's on a screw thread. It's a bit bigger than 40 millimeters, so you can't screw it in, but only by a little bit. So you see this rubber valve here? This is very, very weak. It's very, very thin. And I've seen quite a lot of these in surplus shops where if you take this off, that has ripped or torn or just deteriorated with age. And again, I can't expect an old mask to hold up perfectly, but if you make the mask out of fairly thick, decent rubber, and then you make the XL valve out of a very weak sort of rubber, uh, if a blister agent hits the mask, it eats into that, this will fail very, very quickly and compromise your mask, making your mask useless and you dead. So, that's one of the odd things. Now, I think in theory, if you bought one of these as surplus, you could probably repair this if it broke by simply um, gluing in like a sheet of leather or a sheet of rubber onto there and then, you know, it to blow out when you exhale. But even looking at my one, I can see it's kind of pitted if the cameras will get that detail out. You can maybe see it a bit. So the rubber, you know, doesn't look that strong. And you can see light through that. I don't know if that's going to be obvious on the thing. Maybe it is, hopefully. Yeah, see, you can see where the light comes through that very easily. Which means it's very thin. And very thin is not good when it comes to a mask design like this. So yeah, I'll screw that back on. I've tested this before, as I said, and my one luckily does work. So... Let's talk about the strap system on this mask. So, the French and Italians had this really weird strap system they seem to love where, if I put the straps over, um, you have these kind of adjustable straps here like several other rubber mask straps, which is fine, that works fine. So, it's kind of a four to six point harness, but rather than it simply as being one you fully take off and then, you know, tighten when you're wearing it or stretch it while it's tightened over your face, no. What we have here is a weird hook system, and on the end of the straps is a metal hook. You might think that's really innovative, isn't that clever? Not really. Right, so let me put the mask on. I've, this has got one of those sort of carry straps on it, so I'll put that around my neck there. I'll pop these back away from the face piece. I'll stick the face piece onto my face. Pull that back over. And then, what I have to do is try and hook these bits onto here. Right, so, there you go. That's the mask on. As I said, the strap system is a bit weird. But it actually works. It makes an airtight seal. The Tissot tube system works as well. Because I've got no filter on, there's no air resistance, it's blowing into my eyebrows. But, um, so, what do I think about this then? As I said, I'm really undecided on this mask. I can't work out if I think it's a brilliant design, um, you know, a slightly lacking design, or just kind of a fundamentally flawed design. So, the positives are as well, it was, it's a really early example of a mask, if you think 1951, to take 40mm NATO filters. That's kind of really good. Uh, the strap system, as weird and unconventional as it is, sort of works well sometimes, sort of doesn't work well other times. But, as I said, it does sort of work, so there's that. Um, and yeah, it makes a fairly good face seal. But, yeah, it took 40mm NATO filters, when most people were still on 60mm filters, or they started thinking making cheek filters was a good idea. The XL valve is really weak, which is its fault. That's certainly one of the major negatives. The eyepiece seems to be some sort of early plastic that seems strong enough, and um, the main rubber of the mask is good. So other than the strap system, where I'm really sort of, oh, is it good, is it bad, I don't quite know. It's certainly unique. Uh, other than the uh, really crappy XL valve, that's certainly a weak point of the mask, there's not really a problem with it. The problem certainly was that 
both France and Belgium decided it was a good idea to stick with old versions of this up until 1990 and not replace it with something better. Uh, and by the look of it, when a lot of these are issued, they weren't, uh, you know, still making them up until that point. They did initial big production run. And then said, that will do, and they can stick with these masks. Uh, you will uh, keep the mask until it is uh, completely broken and you are dead. So, um, that is uh, the M51. So to take it off, you just kind of pull that until the clasps come undone. Even without the clasps undone, when you have the mask on, it still kind of makes a good seal, but that, those straps obviously prevent it pulling away from the chin. So anyway, I'll pull it fully off now. So, as I was saying, I really can't figure this thing out. Um, so this might seem like a weird video, it's just kind of a weird ramp one, but this is a mask where I can't seem to form an opinion on it. There's bits I really like about it, there's bits that are really stupid, and there's bits that are just odd. Combine it with the fact they didn't replace these in both France and Belgium until the 1990s. And you've just got this really sort of weird, bizarre mask. Now, if I can get my hands on for not stupid amounts of money, an M53, I certainly will, because I want to see what the M53 is like in comparison, but as far as I'm aware, they just changed that. If they put better rubber underneath, that is great. Uh, now, one of the reasons I think the XL valve might look like this, rather than a standard XL valve, is I think maybe they thought this is kind of like a membrane and therefore it becomes, you know, a sort of speech diaphragm that way. The problem is, you know, it's it's really weak. And, like, when you see the Russian plastic ones, they don't seem, you know, particularly thick or good, but they at least, you know, you don't think that is going to rip at any moment because at least it's plastic, which I guess is quite strong. This, on the other hand, really isn't. As I said with mine, I can start seeing little pits in the rubber where I guess within a few years that is going to go, the rubber. As I said, I guess when they designed the mask, they never intended it to be kept in service till the 1990s. Now we're about 27 years you know, later, or at least 20 years later. I don't know when about in the 90s these started being both replaced in French, uh, French and Belgian service, but they did. But yeah, it's an interesting enough mask. I know in Fallout 4, because a lot of people keep asking me what gas masks in it, there's a mask that looks very much like one of these or one of the Italian World War II masks in there. But as I said, this is a weird mask because I can't really form an opinion on it. And I know that sounds odd, but like I said, there's masks I absolutely hate, masks I love, some masks where I think, oh, they're mediocre, and then there's this, and I don't really think this is mediocre. I can't you know there's um, a really thin border between people who are geniuses and people who are insane. I think that person who designed this mask was tiptoeing right along that border. And this is what they came up with. So yeah, that's my um, opinion on this uh, French or Belgian ANP M51 mask. And my opinion is I can't make up my mind on the thing if it's good or bad. But there you go, that is the mask. Let me know what you think about it in the comments, I'd love to know. But if you can get one of these for like £10 or less in a working condition, I'd recommend it, just so you can look at it yourself and go, is it good, is it bad, I don't know. But there you go, there's the a and 51